Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, live homeschool class. It's, um, it's fantastic to see you all here. I'm so happy um, that, you're, that you're taking the time to, to, to spend with me this week. Honestly, I feel, I feel honored. So thank you. Um, so today we started a little bit later than, than usual because I received a lot of messages from pre people in Brazil and they said that 11 o'clock is too early for Brazil. So, so today we're going to try one o'clock. So hopefully... Um, some people from some other time zones can have the opportunity to to uh, to join. Um, so so basically, um, we're going to start with some games, okay, with some games, and then the class will become more and more difficult as we progress. Okay, so we're going to do games, some fun, some fun games, and then we're going to do. We're going to do some more difficult kind of things towards the end, okay? Um, okay, cool. So, um, let's start with uh, games. And again, I'm going to use my, um, my artistic skills. <laughs> um, we're going to um, play something called Word Winks, okay? Word Winks are basically... They're pictures which represent phrases in English, okay? So, um, they're very common phrases, um, and, you know, these, these types of, of phrases and idioms, they're really important in English, okay? So, I want you to just, um, I'm going to do the drawing, and you have to guess what the phrase is. Are you ready to see my incredible artistic skills? Okay, here we go. Okay, oh, what? Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so th this is an interesting question from um, Vespkrisk. It's it's a common a common um, misunderstanding the difference between um, no that's not what I want I want this the difference between um, fun and funny okay so fun and funny are not the same okay something can be fun but not funny and something can be funny but not fun. So, fun is basically when you have a good time, right? So, for example, um, walking in the mountains could be fun. So you're having a good time. Um, skydiving, jumping out of an airplane, that's you're having a good time. Um, maybe even at work. You know, I'm having fun at work, right? That's fun, having a good time. Funny is related to laughing, okay? So, you know, a joke is funny. Um, uh, you know, Jim Carrey is funny, right? You know, they make you laugh. So, they're not the same. They're similar, but not the same. Um, so... Already we have we have some some great answers here. So yes, yes, I think the first person actually was um, was <laughs> the first person was uh, Mulatovich fifteen uh, and Jean Baptiste and Violetta as well and also Alexander. Absolutely right. It is. Oh, that's not the right window. Okay, it is head in the clouds. Very good, very good. So, somebody who has their head in the clouds is somebody like me, okay? I am... <laughs> All my life, I've had my head in the clouds, right? So, basically, it means that you're, 
you're a dreamer, always imagining things that are maybe not real. <laughs> De delusions of grandeur, all of these things. That that's me, head in the head in the clouds. And so here's an important question, okay? Because this is a metaphor. This is a metaphor, head in the clouds, right? In fact, it would be maybe better to draw it like this, right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Hey, there I am, okay? My head is in the clouds. So, the question is, what do you call a person who is the opposite? What do you call a person who is, you know, responsible and sensible and realistic and what do you call that type of person? Look at the metaphor, right? Look at the metaphor. Think about, think about what could be the opposite of this, okay? Giving you a, I'm giving you a good clues here. What's the opposite of head in the clouds? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Costa Rica, Costa Rica, you're absolutely right. Julie as well. Uh, Violetta, that's similar. It's similar. It's similar, but um, but not exactly the same. Okay. So head in the clouds or feet on the ground. Okay. So <laughs> Gian Lucas says he calls the opposite a boring person. <laughs> so if you have your feet on the ground, then you are a sensible person. Okay. A person who always is kind of careful and, and, and sensible. And it's a little bit different a little bit different from down to earth, okay? A little bit different. Feet on the ground talks about um, kind of safe, right? Doesn't, maybe doesn't take risks, um, you know, doesn't, always realistic. Maybe, maybe I should say realistic better, right? Better. Down to earth is more of a, is more of a, a mindset. I would say it's more, related to humble, okay? Humble for your, um, for the Spanish uh, watchers, that would be humilde, right? So it's, it's somebody who is, um, that's a great one, Ricardo. Love that, pragmatic, great adjective. Maybe I should uh, make it, just get it out of the way of my beautiful picture, pragmatic. Right, and down to so down to earth is more an attitude. So, for example, um, you know, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, maybe he's he's super rich and super famous, but he's down to earth. Okay, maybe he has his head in the clouds, but he's down to earth. So, the opposite of down to earth would probably be like, um, let me think. Uh, well, the opposite of humble, egocentric, maybe. Uh, egocentric. Uh, let's 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 use the the magic of the internet here, and let's look at antonyms, right? Uh, I'll make this bigger. Let's look for an antonym of humble. Uh. uh, uh Humble, okay, humbler. It comes from Latin, right? Interesting. But where are the, where are the, um, where are the antonyms? It's not, there's not here. Okay, that's, that's great. Thanks, Google. Um, <laughs> uh, syn uh, synonyms, here we go. Uh, let's try this website then. Humble. Uh, definition. Uh, so these are the these are the. Here we go. Antonyms. Right. Uh, we have um, discourteous. Ooh, that's a nice one. Uh, egotistical. Egotistical. Superior. Showy. 
pretentious. Right? Mm-hmm. 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 So, arrogant. Narcissistic. Wow, you guys... I, I didn't need to, to, to look on Google, actually, because, because you guys are, are amazing. Amazing vocabulary. Big-headed. Love that. Big-headed. Um, existential. Shameless. Uh, a show-off. Yes. Yes, yes. Very good. Exactly. A show-off. Um, arrogant. Really nice. Really nice. Okay. Um, let, let's, let's go back and do another one now. And again, you know, I want, I want you to realize, I want you to realize that our, our curiosity, right? Our curiosity asking, what does it mean? What's the opposite? What are some related words, right? Look, 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 our curiosity is, is leading us in some very interesting directions, right? Very interesting directions. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Uh, 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 let me choose one here. Um, uh, <laughs> ooh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> some of these are very funny. Okay, um, here we go. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can uh, do, do some. Um, some great drawing here. <laughs> oh dear. And maybe he's kind of a little bit you know, he's a little bit that. Like, <laughs> he's not happy. He's not happy about what's happening. <laughs> Does anybody know what this means? Um, I know that it's clearly obvious, but... <laughs> Julie G. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Um, Ricardo Resende uh, as well, and and Marcin, that is a um, that is a synonym, right? So um, yeah, let's uh, let, let 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 me let me write it here. Okay, so you can kick the habit, or also you can break the habit. Um, to <laughs> <laughs> Hit the habit monster. <laughs> um, stop smoking. Yes, exactly. So, kicking the habit, breaking the habit. You know, these are um, these are things that. Well, for example, in in my life, I I have never smoked. Okay, but um, my mum did smoke for a long time. And it was, it was very, it was very difficult for her to quit, right? It was very difficult for her to kick the habit, but she did. Um, but now, now that we are, you know, locked in our houses, it's probably not a good moment to try and kick the habit, right? Because um, no, normally the, the side effects, right? The secondary effects of trying to quit smoking or or whatever other addiction you have. You know, it's it's not a good moment to be locked in a house with other people, right? If if my mum tried to quit smoking, if she tried to kick the habit during a um a lockdown, I would be dead. <laughs> she would kill me. <laughs> um now I, because I am, I'm also, I'm always full of curiosity about language, right? Always. And I know that 
uh, a habit is the is the is the word for a thing that the nuns wear. So if you have a nun um, and they wear the the thing, you know, it's like a like a kind of like a thing like this, right? Sort of. It's all black. <laughs> like this. Um, kind of, right? This, this, I know it's a terrible drawing. This is called a habit, right? And, and I wonder, right? Because I'm always curious about language. I, I wonder if, if this habit is related to a habit because the nuns, the nuns wear this every day. And which word came first? See, I'm curious about this. So let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Uh, where are we here? Okay. Uh, habit etymology. Right. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, look at this. Okay, so it says here it came from habitus, which is a condition. Okay, so the term it originally meant dress and then later coming to denote physical or mental constitution. Okay, let's look at, um, let's look at a different website because uh, we always want a second opinion, right? Okay, so yeah, so look at this, right? Uh-huh. 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 So, so basically, um, basically it started as the clothing for the nuns. And then because, because of this, it came to talk about your, your, um, your, your mental state, right? Fascinating. Fascinating. So, it's not a habit because it's a habit. It's a habit because it's a habit. <laughs> totally clear. Totally clear. <laughs> um, okay, let's um, let, let's let's move on to, to the next game. Okay, so um, I want to play a game of taboo with you. So this this is taboo. Okay. So basically, um, you. This is not. This is yellow. It's very difficult to to see. Um, but for example, uh, this one, this one will be easier for you to see. Okay. Uh, what you have to do, okay, is you have to describe this word. You have to describe this word without using these words. Okay. It's quite difficult. So you have to describe toothbrush without mouth or clean or paste or bathroom. Okay, not easy, not easy. So I'm going to go first. Okay, I'm going to go first, and you have to guess the um, the word. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Um, okay. It is. <laughs> well, yeah. It is an imaginary thing. It's an imaginary thing. Um, it's, uh, normally, normally it's, it's kind of transparent, right? You can see through it. Um, it floats, it floats in the air. Um, and it's, uh, it's a kind of a, a, a typical character from, horror movies, right, from horror movies, um, and it's like a, it's like a person, oh, Jean-Baptiste, Jean-Baptiste, very nice, <laughs> Fearless Girl, it was not a unicorn, but kind of, maybe, maybe the description would be, would be very similar, <laughs> um, it, uh, it's a ghost, of course, of course, a ghost, um, and you see this, you see this GH at the beginning of the, of the word ghost, 
we stole this from the Italians. Yeah. We, we didn't have GH in English until, until we stole it from the Italians. So thank you. Thank you to, um, to Italy for, for providing us with that. Okay. So now it's your turn. Okay. I'm not looking. I'm not looking at this one. I don't know what it is. Okay. So I'm going to look away and you look at the clue and then you have, you have to describe it to me. Okay. Here we go. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Right. I'm not looking. Remember, describe this word without these words. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I can't wait to um I can't wait for you to uh I can't wait to guess what this word is. <laughs> Julie and Marco are saying um they're saying you're welcome on behalf of the um on behalf of the Italians Ooh uh some people are saying that they couldn't uh okay throwing a ball into the basket orange ball tall people chicago bulls is the correct answer is the correct answer Basketball. Basketball. Of course. Of course. And. Ooh, very nice. So it was. Um, game. Oh, where's my screen here? Okay. Uh, yeah, game, sport, team, and court. Ooh. So. Something, you know, that we have in English is that. All of the different sports have, not all of them, but we have different, different names for the different types of places to play. So, for example, uh, you have a basketball court, but you have a, a, and a tennis court, but you have a football pitch and a soccer pitch. No, soccer pitch. A hockey, hockey pitch. And uh, what's what's another one? Um, uh, 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 what's another sport? Oh my god! Uh, ah, well, it's cricket. Um, ah, uh, I'm try and uh, what what other one? Uh, what else do you do on a track? Uh, you um, you do uh, uh, you can do. Um, uh, like a, like a hur hurdles, right? So, um, so you can see that tracks, tracks are the types of places where you, um, you know, which are kind of round and they have, they have different lanes, right? Like one lane, two lanes and you, and you go around they're, they're, they're tracks, right? They're tracks. Um, and then you have, um, oh, where's my thing? You have a court and a pitch. Ooh. So have a look. Have a look at basketball and tennis. And then think about, think about football and hockey. So what's the difference between a court and a pitch? What's the difference between a court and a pitch? A lot of people are saying um, a golf course, but um, we, we can eliminate golf because it's not really a sport. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's just rich white people walking around. <laughs> it's not a sport. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, and also you could you could say a field, right? Okay, so very good. So 
Exactly, exactly. We have we have some some correct answers here. So, uh, a court is normally inside, and normally it's hard, right? It's like a, uh, it's it's like a, you know, a, an artificial material, a man-made material. Basketball court, tennis court, pitch, ho football pitch, hockey pitch. Normally are big, right? And they're outside and they're made of grass. They're made of natural materials, right? Um, yes, exactly. Very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, you know, I've never, I've never played golf, but I, I would love to, to drive around in the little, you know, the little car, the little golf buggy. So, um... A few people were asking about this vocabulary here. Hurdles. Ooh. Okay, it's a great word. It's an important word, right? This is a hurdle. And the person has to jump over the hurdle. Right? And so, of course, of course, we use this as a metaphor in life. For example, I have over overcome a lot of hurdles. Before we can do the deal, there are some big hurdles. For example, okay, so the metaphor is um, the metaphor is very important in language. Um, if you're interested, if you're interested in learning about metaphor in language, then I would recommend uh, reading this book, Metaphors We Live By. This book changed my life, more or less. Um, amazing book. And in fact, I'm working on a series um, about metaphor. A series, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be it's going to be the best series in the world. <laughs> okay, okay. Um let, let's let's do one more of these. Um I'm going to find a blue one because the blue ones are the most difficult. Um blue blue blue. Okay, uh, I saw that one so that doesn't count. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Can you describe this? Uh, without using the words on the card. Here we go, ready? I'm not looking. I'm not looking. It's actually really difficult to not look. Man. <laughs> Man. Okay. Okay. I didn't look. I feel... I feel, um... I feel good. Um... I think that... There's probably a little, a little, um, difference between, between hurdle and barrier, okay? Uh, I think that a hurdle, a hurdle is designed, it's designed for you to jump over, right? But a barrier is just like, you know, no, you know, it's... A barrier is something which is is not designed to be overcome. It's not a difficulty. It's a dead end. Okay, let me have a look at um, let me have a look at these these answers now. Okay. Um, oh, what? No, Ersebet, you cannot use the words in the word itself. Okay, we can't go out right now. Something that you handle, something you carry with yourself, um, use it when you travel, a box when you a box when you travel. You carry it with difficulty. Ah, uh, okay. Conveyor belt. <laughs> Ob Oboloch Obolochka, put a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you did that, but I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm not even mad. 
Uh, I'm uh, it's a Waliska in Polish. Ah, well, you know, since I speak fluent Polish, um, of course, uh, Waliska uh, is, a, is a suitcase, maybe? <laughs> is it suitcase? Is that correct? Um, and, and actually, I can spell, I can spell Waliska in Polish. Because my Polish is excellent. It looks, um, it looks a little something like this. Um, let me just, uh, let me just type it out. Yep. That's, that's it. There we go. That's, <laughs> that, that's, that's how you spell Waliska in Polish. <laughs> what, what, why don't you have any vowels? What? Where, where are your vowels, Polish? Come on, what the hell? <laughs> it was perfect. <sighs> um, um, okay, so we are, we are halfway through the class now. And so I want to, I want to do something a little bit more difficult, okay? Just a little bit more difficult. So... Um, I always get questions from students who ask me about the difference between words. They're like, what's the difference between, um, you know, suitcase and luggage? Or what's the difference between excellent and fantastic? Or what's the difference between this and this? And, you know... Even if you look in a dictionary, if you look in a dictionary, it can be difficult to, to kind of understand the difference. Because an individual word can have the same meaning, right? They can have exactly the same meaning. The difference between vocabulary is about how we co-locate them, okay, how we join them with other words, and about the social situation we use them in, you know, things like that. Um, it's like, it's like, um, for, for example, for example, and, the, you know, I don't mean to be, um, uh, what can I say? I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be vulgar, but for example, um, when you go to the doctor, you, you maybe you have, um, uh, the doctor examines your testicles, right? Testicles is, is the correct word to use in this social situation, in this medical situation, okay? You don't say, uh, the doctor's checking my balls, right? I mean, <laughs> the doctor doesn't say, excuse me, sir, um, I need to examine your balls. It just... You know, no. And they have the same meaning, right? It's the same, the same thing. The difference, the difference is that when we use it um, and the words that go with it, okay? So I want to show you how you can find this out for free, okay? For free. So, <laughs> so... Here is a website, okay? It's called Skell. And the link to Skell is down in the description box, okay? So, let's, let's imagine that we want to understand the difference um, between the word prize and award, okay? So here we have prize and here we have award, right? Prize and award. And... You know, if, if you look in a dictionary, that's kind of similar. Something that you, you get, you get to say, to say good job, right? But, you know, what's the difference? How do we understand the difference, right? So, here we can go into Skell and we can type in prize. And we search for it, okay? And the first thing is it shows us, it shows us the word in in context. So we can see the word being used in sentences, which is great, right? Which is fantastic. But then the really exciting part 
is here at the top, it, when we click on word sketch, what this does is it shows us um, the subject of prize, the object of prize, and what modifies it, right? So I can see that mostly it's about, um, about Nobel and about collecting. Uh, the object is item and it's look highly, especially, particularly, greatly, muchly, and so. Okay, good. Right, good, fantastic. Let's, let's look at award. Now, here we have a lot more information about, about this word, about award. We can see that it's which subjects it's being used with, which objects, which adjectives, which modifiers. And so we can see, you know, the kind of, um, the kind of language that, that goes with this word. Um, if, for example, if you have a, if you have a question, if you have a question uh, about two different words, we can look now. We can have a look now. Um, and if we want even more detailed information, we can go to this website, okay? Wordandphrase.info. And again, the link is down in the description box. So we can do the same thing. We can do a oh, prize and award. Uh, okay, right. Session expired. All right, all right. Okay. Uh, prize and award. I can search, and the first thing it tells me here uh, is uh, is the uh, frequency. Okay. So I can see that prize is is in the top three thousand words, and award is in the top between the top five hundred and three thousand words. So it's much more common. Okay. But then if I click, if I click on one of these, these words here, I can get some amazing detail. So, so look at this. I can see how often is it used in spoken language, in fiction, in magazines, in newspapers, and academic language. And I can see, again, these, these collocations. So I can see that prize, okay, it's about look, Nobel again. Um, you know, uh, optimize screenplays. I'm getting an idea of, of how the of how the word works. An award, award is different. Look, it's it's hardly ever used in fiction. Really common in newspapers. Um, Grammy awards, baseball awards. So by by using these these websites, and they're completely free. Okay, totally free. I can really understand the difference between words, um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, let, let's look for example at um, well and uh, well and good as well. So well, you can see. Look, we're talking about know well, work well. Receive well, perform well, um, establish. Uh, we can, right? So we can we can see the kind of vocabulary that goes with it. And then if we look at good, uh, good adverb. Okay, good adverb. Natured. Okay, so it's 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 used with different words. Used with different words. So I I just I want you to. To, to have those websites so that you can, you can answer those questions on your own. You don't need to, to ask me or, or, or anybody. You can have no doubts, right? Um, and yes, you can also use um, the Google Books Ngram Viewer, which is, which is also a great tool, okay? Um, to... to, to show you about the popularity of a word. So for example, n-grams, Google n-grams, okay? And I can type in a word like, for example, virus. And I can search and you can see that uh, the word virus 
was not really as common. And then in 1920, well, in 1918, I think that's when the um, that's when the Spanish flu epidemic started, right? Look at the word virus, Ooh, right? Okay. And then it came down again in 2008. And I'm sure, I'm sure that in, um, I'm sure that if we looked uh, in 2020, the popularity of the word would, would be like this. So it's more useful to understand, for example, if we want to look at the difference between shall and might, with a comma, by the way. Okay, so look, I can see that shall is slowly, 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 slowly dying. And might is, is also reduced a lot, but not the same as shall, okay? So it's really great to help you understand how, you know, how vocabulary is changing over time. Um, uh, Miguel Angel Flores Regis, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for your, um, your, your donation. But uh, honestly, it, it, um, I, I very much appreciate it, but it's absolutely not necessary. But, but thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's move on to, to something I wanted to talk about um, to talk about the other day, which was conditionals. Okay, so I whoops. I, I want to I want to play this game with you. Okay, this game is called Bucket of Doom. It's a really fun game. It's a little bit a little bit naughty, but but it's it's a fun game, okay? But to play this game, we need to use conditionals. Okay? So I'm going to quickly I'm going to give a super fast class about conditionals, and then we're going to play the game, okay? So, here's my beautiful artwork. Okay, so, some languages have, well, di different languages have different ways of showing probability, okay? So, some languages have kind of like a word with a little with a little uh, suffix, right, on the end. So you kind of add this to the word to show probability. Um, some languages have a complete, they have a conjugation, right, of the verb to show probability. Um, other languages have constructions for probability. Lots of different ways, right? Now, one, one common way to show probability is the subjunctive, right? The subjunctive is really common in, um, in a lot of European languages, but not in English, okay? Basically, in English, the subjunctive is kaput, dead, doesn't exist, right? So how, this is an important question, how can we show probability in English? The subjunctive is dead. How do we do it? So what we do is we use a different part of language. We use our verbal tenses, okay? So because we have no other option in English, right? No option. So in English, our past talks about things that are basically impossible, okay? Our present tenses talk about things that are true. And so we're continuing, okay, we're continuing along this timeline. Our future tenses talk about things that are possible or probable, okay? And this, this concept, okay, this map, this is how we use tenses in conditionals in English, okay? And this explains... This explains, you know, the first and uh, the, the zero, the first, the second, the third. And it also explains mixed conditionals, right? 
So, for example, let's let's do something true. For example, saying true. If I eat a lot of pizza, okay, first part of the conditional, if I eat a lot of pizza, I get fat, okay? Truth, truth, right? So, and you can see that both of these are using present tense because it's a true thing, okay? There's no, there's no doubt about this, right? Well, okay, maybe I could say, if I eat a lot of pizza and I don't exercise and I drink beer and I sit on the sofa and watch, watch Downton Abbey, I get fat. I've never watched Downton Abbey, but my wife is addicted to it. Um, anyway, um, now let's look at something impossible. Something impossible. Money. Let's talk about money, right? If I had one million euros, dollars, sorry, if I had moved into... First part of the conditional, I would uh, buy, uh, I don't know, <laughs> buy, <laughs> buy pizza, right? Now, here, I don't have a million euros. It's impossible. So we're going to use the past tense. And here, this would is also the past tense because would is the past of will. So this conditional, this conditional makes sense. Something impossible, something impossible, right? Okay. Now, um, let me just erase this, erase this, and and let's um, let's do something. Let's do a mixed conditional. Mixed conditional. Okay. So if and we're going to mix we're going to mix something true with something possible all right so if i study hard i so that's the first part i will pass the exam okay now this is will remember is 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 something possible okay it's not true it's not true. It's possible, right? But I could use I could use other types of future possibilities like I might pass the exam. I should pass the exam. The the this this is an example of a mixed conditional, okay? Right? Big mixed conditionals are not some special thing, okay? All we're doing is we're mixing different types of probability. Some things that are impossible, things that are true, impossible. And remember, we can only mix things if logically it makes sense. Okay? So for example, for example, you cannot have a mixed conditional, right? You cannot have a mixed conditional of, let me just erase this. You can't mix this with this. Because you cannot have something which is impossible and also possible, right? You can mix other things, right? You could mix impossible with, with true or uh, true with possible. But, you know, it always has to be logical, okay? Always has to be logical. Okay. So that's my, my conditionals class, right? My super quick conditional class. Jojo Mojo. If I watch Christian's videos, I will become a better person. Thanks. So kind. Okay. Um, this game is, is, is super, super easy. Basically, I am going to give you um, five objects. Okay, I'm going to give you five objects and sorry, I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a cold. 
I don't I don't think that I'm infected with uh, with the virus, but well. Um, uh, I'm gonna give you five five objects, and with these five objects, you have to escape. You have to escape a very bad situation. Okay. So let let's have a look at the five objects that I'm going to give you. Okay. I'm going to give you a cheese grater. Okay, uh, let me uh, change my screen here. Okay, cheese grater. I'm going to give you a cheese grater. Do you know what a cheese grater is? I hope so. Uh, I'm also going to give you an electric eel. I love that song. With electric eel. I say, ooh, ah. Uh. Shock me like an electric eel. <laughs> Great song. Um, um, I'm also going to give you a gingerbread man. Super important to have a gingerbread man, right? Gingerbread man. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Also, I'm going to give you this. A... Where's my mouse? A matchbox with one match. Right? Matchbox with one match. And I'm also going to give you a... Oh my god, some of these are very, um, what should we say, um, risque. Uh, some of them are very kind of, you know, not, uh, not a, not, not good things for the internet, right? Um, hmm. Ooh, okay. Well, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, ah. Okay. I like this one. I'm also going to give you a, where's my mouse? Seriously. Here you are. Okay. A rack of spices. Rack of spices. Rack of spices. Okay, so now remember if if you're not sure about vocabulary, best best friend, Google Images. Of course. Cheese greater. There we go. Can't go wrong with that. Google Images. Everybody knows what a cheese grater is, right? Cheese grater. Um, our other vocabulary was electric eel. There's an electric eel. Oh no! It's an electric eel. <laughs> a gingerbread man. Gingerbread man. Thank you, Google Images. I love you. It's a gingerbread man. The Muffin Man? Yes, the Muffin Man. <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you seen Shrek? <laughs> um, uh, Matchbox. Matchbox. Ooh, okay, so Matchbox is a brand of toy cars, but this is the match we're talking about. Uh, these, these things. Okay, ma maybe matches. Okay, so these these are the matches inside the match box, right? And finally, a rack of spices. Rack of spices. There we go. This is a rack, and there's the spices. Okay, so instantly, instantly we we can understand what all this vocabulary is, right? Eel is tasty. Yeah, actually, you know, I have eaten eel. It's not my favorite. Not my favorite food, but well, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to eat. Um, okay. So, now, what you have to do, this is the game. The game is, you have to escape from this situation using 
one of these objects, using one of these objects, and of course, a conditional. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? This is the card. You are on the top floor of a cut price skyscraper when a massive earthquake strikes. Okay? Cut price skyscraper. A skyscraper that was not built with quality materials. Okay? A, a bad quality skyscraper with poor construction and, you know, weak. Right? And you're on the top floor and there's an earthquake. Right? How will you escape this situation using one of these objects? And I want to see, I want to see you writing a conditional, a full conditional. For example, if I was on the da da da, I da da da, right? This is, this is the, this is what I want. I want you to use the structure. <laughs> Patricia said, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> Why not, Patricia? <laughs> um... I'm sorry, but if you're writing your answers uh, in, in Russian, I can't understand them, obviously. Even though, I, even though I'm fluent in Russian. <laughs> totally fluent in Russian. <laughs> I can... Um, Russian kind of looks a bit like this. Right? It's kind of like, kind of like everything's backwards and there's some sort of stuff like something like that. That to me looks Russian. I don't know if that's a Russian word. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay, here we go. We have some great answers here. Um, antagonist. I would grab an electric eel and die and then I, then I would escape to heaven. Ooh, very nice. Perfect conditional. Really good, really good. <laughs> if I had an electric eel, I would ride it to escape the earthquake. Susanta Poda, you would ride an electric eel. What would that look like? I'm curious. Oops, no, that's the wrong button. Would that be like... So here's the electric eel. Right? And it's kind of going zzz, zzz, zzz. And here's Susanta Podar. Yee-haw! She's got her cowboy hat. <laughs> to, to escape the... <laughs> to escape the earthquake. Uh, oh, if I was... If I was on the top floor of a cup price skyscraper, I would eat the gingerbread man. Huh. I would eat the gingerbread man. Nice. Perfect conditional. Very good. <laughs> uh, Jojo Mojo. If I had an electric eel, I would smear and slip out of the scrappy building. Ooh, okay. Okay. So you pick up the eel. You pick up the eel and kind of like... Make make everything slippery and then whoo! Nice. Nice. Um, if I had an electric eel, I would use one of the electric strikes to die earlier. Ooh. I would use a cheese grater and jump. <laughs> so good, so good. Okay, Let, let's see. Let's see if you can escape something a bit more. Um, a bit more difficult. All right, you ready? No, not that one. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, here we go. You go to A and E. 
A and E is accident and emergency, right? In the hospital, you go to A and E with chest pains. An X-ray reveals a parasitic alien living inside you, ready to burst out. How would you escape that situation? That's what I want to know. Using a cheese grater or a rack of spices. <laughs> uh, some of these conditionals are great, guys. Really good. If I was on the top floor of the building, I could escape using the match to burn the building and get saved by the fireman. <laughs> okay. Natalia says, I would eat all the spices and kill the alien. Really nice. <laughs> If, 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 if I haven't washed the dishes, I would ride an electric eel? What? what? Oh my god. If I had an alien inside me, I would call Ripley to help. Oh my god. So good. Ah. Oh. Okay, this is my favorite. Jealous Monica says that he or she, I don't know, would eat the cheese grater. That's a great idea. And then it would, you know, grate the alien's head off. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, guys. Well, listen. Um, that is the end of today's, of today's live class. Um, unfortunately, today... We're not going to do a Zoom, uh, a Zoom chat room because I have some online meetings. So it's impossible, unfortunately. But I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I think probably, um, probably at the same time. I'll be back tomorrow at, um, at 1 o'clock uh, instead of 11 o'clock. Um, uh, yeah, so, but, but listen, uh, and also I want to say that, um, if, if you're sending me an email or, or a message, um, at the moment, um, I'm, I'm receiving a lot of, a lot of emails and messages. I don't have time, uh, to reply to all of them, but I'm reading all of them. Um, and I apologize that I can't reply right now, but, um, it's, it's a difficult moment, um. Too, too much, uh, too much work. Um, so tomorrow we'll have another live class. Tomorrow we'll do some speed English in Zoom, okay? And tomorrow's going to be awesome, guys. So please stay safe. Um, please um, stay inside. And uh, I'm sending lots of love to you and your your family right now. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. Bye, guys. Lots of love. Bye.